and it looks like we are live. Oh, Happy good. So let's share another Tuesday tea flicks. Happy Tuesday, Happy folks. Tuesday. Yeah, it's the only day of the week when I'm sure where it is <laughs> yes, and where well, I am. Well, I know Mondays because that's garbage day. Oh, but. thank you. Oh, well, I stay away from the curb at my age. Yeah. <laughs> it's when it's trash day, I don't go outside. No, we'd have to call Just special a, trash for you. A special you're trash heavy. pickup, yeah. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Mama. <laughs> Mama, yeah. I've been insulted in far better joints than this, right, you know. Right. And I was yeah. there to hear it. <laughs> so the days are trickling away and the world seems to be in its usual chaos, but I guess we're all, I hope we're all fine fettle. I'd love to know what fettle is. How are you when you're in fine fettle? I don't know, but it's 17 weeks to Christmas. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I know. I've started getting catalogs already, would you believe? It's in just... any minute now, the 99 cent store will have Halloween and then rapidly after oh, that, yeah. Christmas Absolutely. cards and blow up Santas. Absolutely. Well, without further ado, I'm very, we're honored oh, yeah. and very excited. We have a great lady guest today you're going to love. Uh, well, you already do, I'm sure. Uh, we have um, lots and lots of, lots and lots of friends really waiting for this one. And so without further ado, I am going to bring on the fabulous Ms. Marcella Detroit. Hello. Hello, Marcella. Good morning. Hello. I'm I'm kind of stuck on blow up Santas. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, I Where know. can I find one? <laughs> yeah. Now then, this is a family show. Behave yourself. Oh, okay. Nice. Sorry. You know those? I think I think Marcella means those things that like you that know, wave sit outside gas stations. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We'll yeah. just we'll stick with that. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, okay. Fine. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm good. It's been. I've been so busy in the last week and, or two or three. I don't know. Oh, good. Blend into one. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of writing and uh, you know, a lot of work in the studio and yeah. going out to see friends again. You know, things are starting to kind of, I don't know if they're really back to normal, but the things are starting to pick up. So they are. Yeah. Super Thank busy. goodness. Yeah. yeah. They absolutely are. Yeah. So uh, do you have a studio in your home or do you have to, do you prefer to go out and work? I, I do have a studio in my home, which is comprised of my computer that I've taken to another room. Actually, I have little studio areas that where I can record in my house, like three different spots, like oh. one spot out by my grand piano. Mm -hmm. Then I have another spot in my like office area. And then I have I'm in my studio now as a blurred background. But it's my my studio here where I have a desk and, you know, some gear. Hmm. Up, but I just kind of take my my uh, laptop around. It's all wired with music software, so I just uh, I just great. Wanna... You really you can work from anywhere these days, can't Absolutely. you? If you if you can get yeah. connection, all right. We've had lots of power outs recently. Yeah, just what? little dips. It must be to do with the heat, I'm sure. Yeah, all yeah. right, I'm sure. We've got old infrastructure, and you know, when everybody's home, running their air conditioner. Yeah, well, there you go. That'll yeah. that do it. That'll yeah. do it. Yeah. So now tell us what you're up to at the moment. And I'd like to know how you began, where it all began. <clears throat> well, I can tell you where it began. Um, I was involved in music since I, I can remember, like four or five years old. My father loved music, although he wasn't a musician, but he knew how to play the ukulele. He taught me how to play. Oh. He and I would sing harmonies together. And um, when I joined school, I was in lots of, you know, whenever there was music involved, I was involved. Yeah. Or, you know, in the school choruses and the choirs and the trios and the duos and the quartets and the quintets. I mean, whatever I could. And I started playing violin at seven. Wow. Then, then it was guitar and harmonica. And my dad bought me an accordion. And like I said, he taught me ukulele. Oh. So yeah, my dad bought me an electric guitar when I was 12 and an amp, which was like, wow, dad, that's really cool. No <laughs> that's kidding. That's a cool dad, yeah. No kidding. I, I saw a lovely meme the other day on one of the socials. It said, dad, when I grow up, I'm going to be a rock star. And the father says, son, you can't do both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so true. That's pick one. Cause... Yeah, pick one. <laughs> but I think it's the, I think maybe it's the reverse, the, the you know music and being involved in music and having that inspiration coursing through your veins that keeps you young you know absolutely, oh, absolutely. yeah yes yeah, me i'm and 95 now so well she's 93 i'm 93 you're so. 93 you're amazing 
Let's go in November, if yeah. God spares um, yeah. And I think you're right. Ange has got um, the still to this day holds the record for the Royal Victoria College of Music in London. She is the youngest ordained piano teacher. Ordained. At, at uh, <laughs> I don't know what the verb is, but yeah. um, just shy of 13, weren't you? Um, just shy of 12. I just th- No, I was 13. Yeah. Yeah. And she qualified yeah. as a piano teacher at 13. <laughs> I didn't want to, I tried teaching one or two, but I used to want to smack them across the knuckles, you know. <laughs> I would have made a lovely music teacher. If I can do it, why can't you, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's not. Maybe yeah. not. That's right. Yeah. So how many instruments do you actually play? Actually? Um, well, you know, I, it's not like I master all of them, but yeah. but I play, like I said, guitar, piano, um, ukulele, harmonica, um let's see a little bit of a little bit of flute like when i had to do a show back in 2012 i used a flute sample on on one of my um songs and so i think i'm gonna play it live how hard can it be well i took lessons starting from july and then the show was in september so i played it well enough to be able to to play the line you know instead of running samples behind me but it's a difficult instrument but um Drums. I love drums. In fact, the oh. first time I, I learned how to play drums, too, before I was doing a show back in 2018, when I went to England, I went to London to do a residency there. And I just thought, I love drums. I, I love programming drums. I'd love to be able to play. So I started getting lessons from a really good friend of mine. Uh-huh. And I was able to play a song and sing live the first wow. time ever in my life. And uh, I, you know, I, I was proud of it i don't know how it that's, sounded that's but nobody funny. nobody came along with the big hook and pulled me off the stage so no this is i think there's a reason there aren't a lot of singing drummers i mean that you know you've got don henley phil collins ringo to a certain extent um yeah. dave Grohl. but it's a difficult syncopation isn't it when you when you're trying to you've got both your arms and both your legs and all of your brain working and then you have to remember lyrics and tonality and tune and it's really hard. Karen Carpenter, I think, was the only female other singing drummer I could think of. Yeah, I can't really think of any other singing females. Especially females, but, no. Yeah, but you know what? I didn't find it that hard. I don't know why. It's just if you really have the song ingrained in your in your mind yeah. and body, mm-hmm. then you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about the lyrics. All, all you have to do worry about is, you know, okay, what what's the groove and just make sure you practiced it you know like crazy right. so that you can do it when you're you know up there in the head in the you know like a deer in the headlights on stage <laughs> are you right-handed or left-handed right right-handed because that was one of the other things that always amazed me about Ringo um, is that he is left-handed but he had to sit, sit down at all of these working men's clubs and pubs and all these rotten joints in in England and then subsequently Germany with right-handed kits as a left-handed drummer. So that's maybe why Ringo swings the way he swings because he's he's just got two opposite sides of his brain working with the equipment. Yeah, maybe so, maybe so, but wow, he's like one of my favorites. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. people people just think, you know, the, the Beatles are, are, you know, all about the front men. But when you, if you take away Ringo's drums, uh, sure. there's been things with Giles Martin, um, so George's son, you know, doing the mixes and things. You mm-hmm. take the drums out, and it completely alters the song. I mean, it, it's it's almost like he was an arranger on on these hits mm-hmm. because, you know, yeah. without yeah, right? with such unique, unique patterns, you know, unique unique uh, grooves and stuff that yeah. somebody else definitely wouldn't have come up with. Mm-hmm. No, and a large part of it was because their personalities gelled so well. Yeah, that Liverpool sense of humor. You know, you can't beat it. Well, and Paul, Paul is left-handed too, so you yeah. had a left-handed rhythm section. Wow! Um, so maybe that had something to do uh, with, you know, is, how the groove, uh, how the groove worked. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. So now, tell me, you've written songs for and with all sorts of celebrities. Now, go on, name drop. I yeah. dare you. I, I did my 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 muscle lifting this morning, my workout, so I can pick the names up for you. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Well, I was, you know, when I made up my mind that I wanted to do music professionally, I just kind of looked up at the sky and I said, this is what I'm going to do with my life. And then I was like, I had a horse, I was like a horse with blinders on, like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. So 
I worked up my way in, in the ranks in Detroit and I played, ended up playing in a band called Julia. We opened for Bob Seger. And then we, no, I'm sorry, not Bob Seger. We opened for David Bowie, but we were oh. discovered by, by Bob Seger's and Seger's wow. manager. And so I ended up being in his band. And then I moved to Oklahoma, believe it or not, because Tulsa was a big budding music scene. Leon Russell and Shelter Records were there. And that was something I wanted to be a part of. Yeah. So I moved up there and um, some friends of mine were in Seeger's band together. So they invited me there. And that's kind of how it started. I ended up being in um, working with Leon Russell and being in his band. And and uh, he even wrote a song about me, which I was like, so if you would have told me that when I was like a huge groupie of him, yeah. that I was singing with him a few years later mm -hmm. and in a relationship, maybe not a great idea, but um, that's amazing. It was incredible. And then I ended up joining my friends who were working with Eric Clapton. So I worked with Eric and then I started to write songs that Eric was, you know, we were writing songs together. Some of them were on his albums. There were like eight or nine songs that I co-wrote with and wow. for Eric. So yeah, but aside from that, being in Eric's band that I've worked with, when I was doing session work in LA, I worked with some of my idols like Aretha Franklin, singing with the, on the duet with her and George Benson called Love All the Hold Away. Oh, I remember wow. that. Yeah, I was doing a lot of R&B stuff. Um, you know, George Duke, Stanley Clark, which kind of was like funk R&B, almost verg verging on jazz. And yeah. um, the producer, Arif Mardin, he would call me, he called me to do uh, some sessions for Bette Midler. Wow. Um, and then the session with Aretha and I worked with Jeffrey Osborne and so many wow. different acts. Yeah. It, and Shaka Khan, I wrote a song for her and Al Jarreau, which George wow. produced. And I co-wrote the song, but, um, and I, also George said, why don't you come and sing on it with them? So I, wow. I got to the studio and uh, worked and with Al. What a voice. Oh, God. oh yes. wasn't he amazing? Yeah. yeah he, he was, I, I met him a few times at various, um, like Grammy and Music Cares things. What a, yeah. what a fascinating gentleman he was. Yeah. Really deep, deep, deep character. I think, you know, people knew him for his voice. It was kind of the new, the modern Johnny Mathis, wasn't it, at the time? This, yeah. This crystal bell clear kind of vocal that he brought to it. But he was really a deep, deep character. Yeah, absolutely deep. And, what you know, the skill that he had was just remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I worked with... Um, Robin Gibb of the Bee Gees, he and I did some stuff together. He produced some stuff on me. We did uh, uh, in the, I think it was in the, the score, the, the soundtrack for this movie, Times Square, uh -huh. um, all about Robert Stigwood. It was his, oh. his production. So he put me together with Robin and then I worked with Robin on several things, including Jimmy Ruffin, a solo album of his. We did a duet together. So yeah, it's been really fortunate. Wow. Have you ever thought of writing a book or have you done gonna, one? I was just going to say, have you done a book? And if, if so, how the hell did I miss it? I'm buying that today. That's fantastic. Well, you, you can't buy it because oh. we only made a limited amount of physical copies. That's it where I couldn't out, find it. Yeah, it came out in 2021 with the release of an, my album called Gold. Uh-huh me celebrating 50 years in music. And so I, thought, I had already started my autobiography, but it was very, very long and I had been gathering material for years and years. So I, I had to edit it. So we, we made sure it was ready for the release and we included these with the release of the album. So we're thinking of, we've had a lot of requests, so we're thinking of making it available digitally. Soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we do uh, just as an aside, and we can talk about that off. My husband's just produced an audiobook um, for a gentleman in Phoenix who's very, very busy. It's about a boxer who fought Muhammad Ali and George Foreman and Leon Spinks, and nobody ever heard of him. It's a murder mystery, true story. Um, and the author was very busy, and so we got him into a recording studio for a 30 minute sample. And then my husband has modeled his voice using LLM, large language modeling. And he's created the rest of the book without Marshall having to be here. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. Saves a lot of time. And people, people like to hear stories from the author, you know. Sure. So whether, you, whether you're doing it digitally as an ebook or you have little snippets um, that, where you tell stories like this, 
Uh, and then with Angie's books, we have something called smart book technology where we, we add QR codes to chapters that link to videos that enhance the content that you've just read. Mm. How so. cool is that? I would, I would yeah. love to do something like that. It would be so yeah. interesting. We'll you know. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we can jump on a call. Karen Reader, uh, one of our uh, faithful viewers from Edinburgh in Scotland, um, was just saying there was a lady called Jan Erico, who was a great female drummer in the 60s, but she played predominantly in male bands. So I have to go look up Jan Erico. Thank you, Karen. Oh, thank you. Um, he's Ooh. also asking about um, that you worked with Dave Stewart. Did you ever get a chance to meet Annie Lennox or do anything with her? Yeah, yeah. Um well, you know, that well, that was in my Shakespeare sister days, which was right. Come that was the next step after all my session work and doing an album of my own, but um mm -hmm. right, on Epic Records. But yeah, then I met Siobhan and at Fahi and Dave Stewart of the Arithmetic, and Siobhan was in Bananarama. Right. And, yes. um, so we used to hang out. We saw hung out with Annie a few times, had had dinner with her a few times and saw her over at Dave at Siobhan's place. And we never did anything, you know, musical. Musical, but, yeah. But she was always incredible. She's, oh, she's, she's amazing. She's another yeah. one of those incredible, clear as a bell, crystal clear voices, isn't she? Yeah. She's just once heard, never forgotten. Mm. Oh, nope. really amazing. She came to see one of our shows about four or five years ago. We oh. did a, we did a benefit. Um, it's called the Magical History Tour. And it's sort of oh, a behind, yeah. behind the Beatles talk and music evening. Mm -hmm. And Ange and I sit there and tell the, the true stories behind the songs and, you know, how Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is, is not LSD. It's nothing to do with that. And it was a little girl called Lucy Vodden that Julie and Lennon went to school with. And then the band plays Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And it was at a recovery center um, called Beit Shuva. It's a sort of synagogue meets recovery center over in Venice. Cool. And we did it as a benefit for them. And Annie's husband is a member of that congregation and they support the, the work that Beit Shiva does. And oh, so I come cool. out and it was a very intimate little thing. It's only about 300 people um, and the synagogue band. And we weren't trying to be the Beatles or anything. It's just, it's like a, an evening with, you know. And the, the lights go up halfway through one of the songs for them to do a musician change. And I look and in row three, looking back at me, I'm like, I swear that's Annie Lennox. <laughs> And it was. I nearly pooped my pants. There she is watching me. You know. But she like, told oh, us boy. later, didn't she? She said, when I came in this evening on the front row, there were cards with names on, and I saw McCartney, and I thought, oh, surely not. This will be interesting. Yeah. yeah, she didn't know what she, she was coming to watch. but Whether she was going to get Paul or not, but she only got us. She only got us. <laughs> but oh, we I think that was a good thing. She yeah, was lovely. But yeah, they're, they're right. evidently big supporters of the, the Beit Shiva recovery mm. center over there so yeah. it was right. just a thrill to meet her so that's just yeah. um diana's asking can you can you tell you know mention uh talk about some of your favorite songs that you've been either you know recorded yourself or written for other people and you know sort of the genesis of, of where did that how did that song happen um well when i was work i was in clapton's band the first time i was in his band twice um but when we were doing the, what would become the Slow Hand album, one of my favorite songs is a song called The Core. And it's, uh, it was, it was kind of like a jam. We were all in the studio and Eric started playing the guitar riff. And I was in the control room with, with the producer, Glenn Johns. And um, I was listening to what they were doing and I came up with an idea for the song. And, and I came back the next day with the lyric. And it's funny because I don't know why the idea of the core, like being feeling like so alive and being grateful for life, for all the emotions, everything yeah. that we feel as human beings. And, and down at the core is, you know, my hottest is the hottest part. It keeps you going and, and it keeps you inspired and it's exciting. And it was so funny because this hotel that I was staying in every night at, well, at midnight, this mm -hmm. fire alarm would go off. Huh. And it used to annoy me like crazy. I'm like, oh my God, just when I'm, I'm okay. I, I used to, you know, I'm a late night lurker. My husband calls me. He's British, by the way. Um, okay, well, he can't help it. I know. <laughs> I'll have to tell him that. Um, 
but yeah, he, I, I always stay up quite late, but for some reason, this, this annoying, this alarm used to really bother me. You know, we didn't know if it was real, if we had to all like vacate the premises or what, but it was always a test, but I just decided, you know what, use it in the song. And so in the second verse I use, because every day a fire alarm is deafening the silence all around me. I am a flame. Feel it touch my heart. I like to use things that, you know, and that reminded me that, okay, it's reminding you that you're alive. You know, yeah, that's, that's right. Vital. And, yeah. and you, just, you, you can take things in one of two ways. You can be negative about it yep. or you can use it as inspiration and see that. Yes. Right. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I always look at us, I used to write lyrics a thousand years ago, and I always look at each and every one of us as a little planet. And the core that you talk about, which is one of my favorite lyrics, um, oh. is it's it, there's that molten lava inside you that just keeps you going, right? It's that, it's right. the, and it's your gravity and it's your center. And if you don't know what that is or where that is or how to tap into it, you just kind of, you know, flotsam and jetsam, right? Drifting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah, and I also do believe too, like with that fire alarm for you, that the universe sends us these little taps on the shoulder. And you, you know, there are so many people that we call them conditioned yellow. They're like, if you're at a stoplight, everybody stops. If you're at a green light, everybody goes. But so many people just walk around on amber, going, huh? uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they don't, well, that's why we have you know broken ankles and, and stubbed toes and things, right? Because people don't really fully pay attention to their whole surroundings. Linda McCartney always used to say, you know, some of the best photographs she ever took was when she went, she looked up. She said, you know, we all operate, and this is why these Oculus, these um, VR head, uh, headsets are like this shape. We all operate kind of in this zone, but often if you look down, you'll see an arrangement of, of pebbles or weeds or something gorgeous. Or if you look up, even if it's a cloudy day, you realize that the you know it's all bigger than you. Your problems are yes, they're your problems, but you know it's it's just it's all out there, and you can just ask for it, and it shall it shall be returned. I so believe that I have manifested things in my life, things yes. that I never thought, I never dreamed could happen. But it's incredible when you want something bad enough, and you you put all your energy into it. It's yep. it's incredible when when it appears. I had two two people yesterday. I've been waiting to hear from these people for uh, one for a month and one for about six months. And I just sat quietly and concentrated and sort of chanted their names. And literally within an hour, I had emails from both of them. See, so, it, I swear it works. It's, it it just, does. I sound like an old fart hippie, but <laughs> well, you are an old fart hippie. <laughs> oh, oh look, really? This Lou's look. talking about old farts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is, that is, but you know, I think that's what music brings to the globe. I mean, music and mathematics are really truly the only languages that, you know, numbers everybody can read and music everybody can hear. Um, yeah. I think that those, those two things are really what brings the world together and keeps the world together. It's amazing to, have you ever heard of the Eurovision Song Contest? Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I even had a song in the Eurovision song. Thank you. Did you do tell? Yeah, which act? Uh, it was. Uh, let me see. It was about maybe five years ago. A, a girl from Belgium uh, named Syl recorded one of my songs. It was songs. It was called "What's a Time in Tokyo" that I co-wrote. Very mm. cool. Yeah, it's amazing to me that because it's. I mean, it's called the Eurovision, but Australia snuck in. I have no idea how they did that, but. Um, it really does. It's like the musical Olympics. It brings Europe together. I wish we would do something like that here. It would be amazing. Yeah, I think they tried to do that with the kind of American Song Contest. I think it was last year. Snoop Dogg and Kelly Clarkson were hosting oh, it, but it was, right. it was not very good. I'm sorry. It was just yeah. not, I don't know mm -hmm. what was wrong with it, but I don't understand, you know, why most Americans don't really know about it and why I know it's Eurovision, so we're not included, but yeah, it's no, but we, we can have it. Yeah, I think so, and I and I think also with the great, um, you know, the great god of sports, especially in America with American football. I know you call it football, but it's basically handball because you never see the cricket. But whatever, <laughs> well, that's a conversation for another day. Um, I think that it would be just great to have, 
you know, the, the 50 states and Puerto Rico and Guam are heading off against each other for, for musical talent. Why, why aren't we doing that? Mm -hmm. I don't get it. I but. think you should start that. You should make okay. it. Happen. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you've got nothing to do. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll put it on my never-ending list of things to do when I get that <laughs> one day off. Um, Hope Juber is on watching. She oh. says hi. Oh, hi, Hope. Hi, Hope. Hi, Hope. Hi, Hope. Hi, Hope. Hi, Hope. We've got your husband next week. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Look out. So uh, talk about your, um, you worked with Hope, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. It was in 2016, and my husband and I, our family, we were living out in Thousand Oaks, which is about, I want to say, 30, 34, 5 miles um, west of Los Angeles, north and west. Um, and we were out there for many years in Camarillo, and then it, it was Thousand Oaks and then Westlake Village. And we were just like, this is, you know, not really so stimulating, stimulating anymore. We really want to get back to LA mm -hmm. and um, get to work with our friends and see, you know, everybody. And uh, it just seemed like culturally it wasn't very stimulating. Oh, there were some things going on there, but we had just we just wanted a change. So yep. we sold up and we moved back into LA, into Studio City, where we lived before where I met my husband in my home, um, just right down the street, literally. But after I was here for a few weeks, I went to this gym and I, and it was the election, uh, it was pre-election in, you know, 2015. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I won't get into politics because I might. No, no. We, don't, we don't do that here because you can't win. No, I know. But anyway, I was I was watching the little monitor on, on the treadmill and I was just kind of shaking my head and, you know, you know, fuming at what was what I was seeing before me. And then this woman <laughs> came up to me and said, you know, said, are you OK? I'm like, not really. I, I just can't stand the sight of this person anymore. It's driving me nuts. So we immediately bonded. She uh -huh. felt the same. And yep. then then we after seeing her at the gym a few times, then she was like, hey, come. I have some I want you to hear some music that my um my husband and my my daughter created and she well she told me that her husband was Lawrence Juber I was like what and I, I was following Lawrence on um on YouTube and Facebook yep. before we had met sure because I thought he was such a fantastic musician and yeah, yeah. Oh, one of the icons and uh so then yeah I mean that's how the friendship started and then we created an album together called the nasty housewives which I know it's great yeah. yeah it was a protest against uh the administration and because we're yeah, all great part. stuff. I watched it all last night. Had a oh, great you did? Yeah. I did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Diane Summerisle's asking um, if you could record with any artist, past or present, who would that be with? And is which is it a, a song that exists, or would you write a song for that? Hmm. Oh God, that's so hard, isn't it? Carefully, if I only get one choice, right? I think you can have more. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it would have been great. I was so lucky that I actually met George Harrison. I was such a, a huge Beatles fan right. when I was a little girl. And I even got to see them when I was 12 years old in Detroit. And oh, all I did was <sighs> screaming, 15,000 yeah. screaming girls. And I was just sitting in the audience going, shut up. I just want to. But then, <laughs> the musician know the feeling. Yeah. yeah, you know. So I mean, if you would have told me that you are going to record an album at George Harrison's house, um, when you like in the nineties with with right. Shakespeare's sister, I never would have believed it. But right. George wasn't there. But I did meet him another time when I was working with Eric Clapton in, in Los Angeles before I lived here. And I was in this studio called Shangri-La that was owned by the band. And, uh -huh. um, yeah. and I was playing the piano in the live room. And then I heard the door open, open and, and I heard this voice go, this British voice, keep it up. You'll be really good one day. And I looked up <laughs> and it was George Harrison. I was like, <laughs> but that's, the answer, the long answer to that question is, I think actually writing a song with George, I'm just thinking about it now, getting chills of how amazing that would have been. And also John Lennon, uh, I was, George was my first favorite. Okay. I completely like besotted with him. 
Um, but yeah, if I had a chance, also I would have loved to have met Janice Joplin and oh, yeah. written something with her. I love Stevie Wonder as well. Yeah. I mean, there, there are so many. Joni Mitchell. I was just going to say Joni Mitchell's up there on the list for me. Yeah. I was watching her singing. I love that Brandy Carlisle has got her out with this Americana Women tour. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, she, her 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 uh, bones aren't working properly or her muscles aren't working properly. But they instead of just sitting her on a on a stage stool or something, they've got this fantastic like goddess a throne for it looks like something Queen Elizabeth would have sat on and she's very comfortable and her voice is obvious you know she was always in the higher registers but she's using that beautiful alto like brown velvet part of her voice now and she's I, I think she's still at the top of her game she's yeah. fantastic yeah yeah you know our voices change a little bit as we get older but when you suffer uh I think it was a stroke yeah. that really changes that changes things but yeah she's still she's an icon and Certain some of the most amazing songs of all time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's hard to pick, isn't it? I mean, I I always like to to favor female artists just because you know sisters doing it for themselves. But yeah. I mean, even some of the voices um, that stood out to me were the people who didn't overdo it. The the you know Annie Lennox can sing rings around anything, but she only uses it when she needs it. Karen mm -hmm. Carpenter, um, Anne Murray. Another one, just the purest crystal, you know, early Joni Mitchell, just they have the ability and you know they're just kind of holding it back. And that's what impresses me. Yeah, I mean, it depends on me. For me, the artist, like Aretha Franklin is my vocal idol and she always yes. will be as far as vocal. That's true too. Me, connectivity to, you know, what she's singing about. Um, yeah. I always loved her and um, and always will. But I, I, I do appreciate somebody who has that power. Like when Adele came out with her album that had rumors on it, yes. that was, um, I never buy albums. I never, I don't know, I, I don't, unless they're like, you know, Beatles classics or some other classics, but I bought that and I bought Amy Winehouse. I love oh, I was just yeah. gonna mention Amy. I thought she was incredible. Yeah. But her style was a lot to do with the whole production and the whole, you know, timing and yeah. Mark, Mark Ronson is a genius. and. Yeah. Now, I'd love to work with Mark. I think he did a fabulous job with her and everything he does. is Let's manifest her. Mark Ronson, if you're watching. Mark. Mark Ronson, if you're not watching. Yeah, well, come he, on will, down. he will be now because we just, you told me to, to tap him on the shoulder. So if anybody watching knows Mark Ronson, that would be an incredible, you and Mark Ronson, oh boy, I'd buy tickets yeah. for that. That's yeah. A, just amazing. So what are you, fast forwarding to, um, what are you working on right now? Well, right now I am trying to enjoy being in the moment. Yep. Um, you know, being grateful for now. Um, but aside yeah. from that, I am writing songs. I, I'm trying to get more into writing for film and TV. That's okay. something I really would love to do. And I've got a few songs and I've done several sessions in the past uh, few weeks where um, we're completing songs that we're submitting for uh, music supervisors for film and TV. Although now that, you know, the strike is going on, I know. that's yeah. going to affect us all. Absolutely. So, but, you know, it, hopefully it'll be resolved at some point um, yeah. in the not distant future. Yeah. So that's really what I'm doing. I'm, I'm writing with somebody this afternoon, this amazing young girl that um i i've been a huge fan and admirer of, admirer of and really respect her so much she's coming over and uh, we're gonna do some writing and i'm working with another friend of mine who's got a fantastic voice um helping them write and i want to help women i feel like that's my thing now aside from you know wanting to get songs and film and tv i want to help other women find themselves, find themselves creatively, musically, artistically. Uh, I mean, I might even start my own company because it's now something that I'm feeling very right. I don't know, passionate about. So well, very good. Well, do, do keep me posted on all of that stuff. And if you haven't already, uh, if you don't already know Barry Coffing and the guys at musicsupervisor.com, I would be honored to make the introduction. Oh, they have been. They have built a Google for music supervisors where people can search by genre, by tempo, by key, by language, by 
you know, all of that stuff and then save it in their hot box. Um, and all the paperwork is, you know, it's all pre-cleared. You agree to whatever price you want and it's completely non-exclusive. You keep all the publishing. They just split the placement fee. Fabulous. Well, I would absolutely so appreciate yeah, that. We'll, have it. We'll, we'll book another call. I'd love to, you know, help with whatever it is you're, you're doing mentoring girls in the business. Cause you know, I had a, I came up probably around the same time as you as getting signed in Munich to the big mean Germans, BMG. And oh. uh, as, as a woman in Germany, you know, in the eighties, it was kicking and screaming. Oh, I bet. Yeah. So that, that is fantastic. Well, tell the folks where they can learn more about you. Uh, it is scrolling across the bottom in very little letters, but if they'd like to, you know, reach yes. out and join your mailing list. Yeah, well, you can find out everything you need to know about me on uh, MarcellaDetroit.com. That would okay. be That's like the hub that will send you wherever you can find all my the connections to all my socials, you yes. know, Facebook, okay. Instagram, mm. TikTok. In the little while, Martin will put all of today's efforts up on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. So I'll send you the YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. YouTube as well. That, that's mm. fantastic. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Well, well, it'll go everywhere Instagram, yeah. YouTube, LinkedIn, yeah. you name it. Well, I cannot mm -hmm. thank you enough for, I know how busy you are. So it would be. Uh, you know, thank you, you so much for spending the time. I'm just looking at the rest of the. Li, li, no, you can't escape without a limerick. Our our get our very special guests get their own McCartney written limerick. So we usually get it wrong the first time or two. So <laughs> just in the. Yeah. So okay. Oh, a one, two, two, three. Uh, uh, thanks to our guest, guest Miss Marcella, Marcella, whose musical input is stellar. <laughs> we hope you had fun. Now, now our, our work, work here is done. done. And, and we, we trust, trust your are not next, next songs a bestseller. Best Ta-da! We need wow. it. Wow, <laughs> that's fantastic. Okay. Hey, thank you so much. That was so good and sweet. <laughs> thank you. I like a copy yeah, on that. Oh, okay. I will, I'll will. i get your mailing address and scribble some story on it and send it to you so Thanks. it can gather, gather silverfish in a filing cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are so funny and adorable. Ah, uh, well, you keep us posted with what you're doing. Yes, please. Love to include you yeah. in our McCartney Thank newsletter. You. Yeah. And uh, my husband Martin runs McCartney Times at McCartney.com, which is a daily rock and roll news news blog. So anything you're doing, please, let us know. You know. Keep us mm. keep us abreast, and we'll stick it out there for our viewers and readers. Great. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Yes, this is a Excellent. real pleasure. Pleasure. Absolutely. See you soon. Everybody Hope have so. a good week. And yes. we'll see you next uh, Tuesday, August the 1st with the Ooh. aforementioned fabulous Mr. Lawrence Juba. Yeah. Yes. Okay. See Be you great. then. Bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.